Chief Smith, I mean Chief Weatherman. Before, before the chief oh, starts I'm sorry. talking. No, it's <laughs> before the chief starts talking, um, this is just a continuation of the discussions we've been having on the, on st possible station one relocation and a possible station five. And the chief's gonna just walk you through it. I think just the, the takeaway from our discussion today is mainly do you have, is there a priority between the two on council? And then two, are we gonna move, are we gonna continue this discussion because we are getting to the point where uh, to get really good numbers, we're gonna have to start spending some money. So that's that's kind of the intent of today. Uh, just kind of know, we need to know where we need to move. All right, so several months ago, Chief Smith um, presented some of these same slides to y'all, and I'm just gonna reiterate, reiterate some of it. We're looking at the area in question of um, Highway 21 and 115 area with a five, mi five minute response and what's the um, area is not, it's over five minute response. And moving station one further south is gonna worsen the, the area. Um, so, so if we put, Leave station one in the current location. I've got up on the board too, on the screen. If you leave the station one in the current location, you put station five, it's gonna, it's gonna um, leave that big gap right there. That's with the gate of the road. And it'll fill the service gap for station five. Relocation of station one to the south, what that's gonna do, it's gonna make that service gap a little bit larger. It's gonna bring it down to Davie Avenue. I've got a next slide I'll show you in just a second. It's got a, uh, it puts it right on Davie Avenue where before we were up towards Hartness Road area. And this is gonna make it a lot better, a lot larger gap. So that's gonna show the need that station one, station five is gonna have to be put in a location above, the, right around the radio road area. Um, So if you look at this right here, it's a close up of the service gap with this the relocation of station one. You can see up here at the top, right there along Davie Avenue. And it's made that gap a lot larger than what it originally was. That's what this moving station one's location. And Chief, Chief, you're talking about moving the station to um, off of uh, Monroe Street. Monroe, yes, right. Correct. Here. Right, that, that Pearl, Pearl Holmes property. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, that area right in that corridor is actually the best location for Station One. See, so if we go further south down Amity Hill Road, down towards Amity Hill Road, it's going to bring that service gap right in here to downtown Station, oh, right in this area here. Place. So yeah. it's really going to mess up everything. Yeah. And then above there, it's going to be like seven minutes. So basically, what you, what we're looking at is approximately. 40 seconds worth of travel time. Maybe more. A little bit more? Probably okay. more. Okay. Um, so, the next slide you see here, this is based on station location of station five being in place and station one being moved to the Monroe Street area, right there about Shelton Avenue and Gardner Bagnell. And what you're gonna have is the acceptable service gap right here. And most of the area right there in that service gap, that's, you've got a little bit of commercial, but most of it's right there around the I-77, I-40 corridor, right in that area where no man's land is and where they're building that bridge now for the, the I-77, 40 corridor. Um, I, 
circled it here and it shows you the area right there. I wish I'd have had a zoomed, up, a zoomed in a little bit better. And there is a place right there off of Davie Avenue right across from Bryan Center that has a sizable service gap there. But the problem is there's speed bumps and there's so many turns and in those roads, we about have to put a fire station right across the street from it to get that totally covered in under the five minute area, five minute response area. So what we did, we ran some properties throughout the city for two and a half acres or larger. The blue ones are two and a half acres or larger with uh, existing buildings. The yellow are two and a half acres with no buildings on it at all. And if you'll see the circle right there, that circle is the Purple Heart Homes area right there off of Monroe Street. And these figures for the fire station, the estimated building costs, these are what Marty had sent us. They're not hard numbers. Some of it's based off of the Amity, Amity, Amity Hill Road area with the, that station. But I'm thinking it's going to be a lot cheaper. Are you not? What's up? What do you talk to you? Yeah, we, we um, these, these estimates are not as good as the, the estimates that we have for Station 5. Station 5 is more or less we could do a mirror image of station four with some with some tweaks that the fire department has observed and, and no needs to happen since they've been in it for almost 10 years these numbers are are pulled from the municipal service building scaled down but the reason that there's such a difference in the cost between this one and sta potential station five is that you have a, it includes admin offices mm -hmm. and a lot of the hub area uh, which was the community uh, room community room meeting space uh, the EOC all of that from the municipal services building uh, Marty Beal is you know he, he's who we've been talking to about this and he's doing all of this for free right now so he's just kind of giving us some estimates and actually his estimates were a good bit higher here than, than what we're showing um, to get the best number and, and a reasonable number to move on from, we would have to have the design done. Um, Marty could take that building and redesign to, to make it fit here or, it, or anywhere. And based on what we need to either include admin or not include it, um, you know, but we have chosen to include it uh, mm -hmm. because uh, there's a there's a, a thought that you need to have your administration input with at least one of your stations so but this was a probably a high guess on what that station would cost and I would venture to guess that the million dollar site development cost would be lower because the, if it's the Purple Heart home site it is pretty flat correct and, and so um, but yeah that, that's a little bit more on, on the numbers as, as far as site location we, we have a two and a half acre criteria that you're, you're saying, and I wanna just get a couple things straight. That two and a half acres, is that that large of a piece because you've got a stormwater consideration? Well, you've got stormwater and you also have a parking lot. Plus you need the area around behind the station to turn, pull the trucks around because it's safer to pull a truck around the station uh, instead through, of drive backing through, in we, the back yeah, of the building. I understand right. that. Yeah. But uh, because of what I'm, and, and maybe Sherry can answer this, I'm not sure. Uh, if we develop a brownfield that already has uh, buildings on it, asphalt, et cetera, do we get credited the impervious area that's there already? And so that, that sort of a, a site, we would not have to meet stormwater requirements as opposed to a green field, we do. Is that? Uh, I think that, that the answer is that yes. The stormwater ordinance applies to the new impervious areas, so any developer gets credit for existing impervious areas on a new development site. So the 20,000 square feet of impervious area that we need to plan is about 50. We only have to deal with whatever our code says for that 30,000. For the 30. If you've got something that's almost all asphalt, there's nothing, okay? All right, and, and if, if we had a situation like that, would that lower that acreage that we need, 
or does it still need to be that 2.5 acre site? That, that two and a half acres, Scott, correct me if I'm wrong, you might want to come on up, but that was the, that was basically taken as the, the, the site that, it, that we currently have for station four. Yeah. And, and basically the, the, the footprint of station four with all the parking and everything that goes along. Right, and there is, I don't believe any stormwater control measures at station four predated the ordinance in this area. And there is some open space at station four. Um, as far as stormwater goes, there are underground or other type of measures that do not, like you see Randy Mary and their new uh, dealership, all their stormwater um, is it underground? facilities are underground because they wanted surface parking. Right. So that, that doesn't have, it is an A factor, but it's not the factor driving okay. the size so, of the site. So the minimum we need is two and a half acres. It, we've pretty much determined that. Okay. And, yeah, and it's, that's, on, that's based on the, um, the station four plan. And, I, and, <clears throat> and, and what, what we have there. And Scott, Kerr, uh, you know, John was saying, so we've determined that two and a half is a minimum. I think, I think that's the case uh, when we include an EMS well, county function on the property. I had a discussion with EMS yesterday, and they actually have been talking to, I think Blair's been talking to Beth about it. Um, Marty had estimated $600,000 for building costs, the estimated site development at $160,000. Um, that's still a little high. She, she actually had a price of $520,000 for what they got last, I think last year for, for a site. So, I mean, He's a little high on that too, but yes, well, back to back to this two and a half acres. We looked around. I mean, we have rode property after property. Ron, myself, Scott, Chief Smith. We rode around, and we've also looked at our study. And this area right here, this piece of property, is probably going to be the best area for our coverage and for our response. Well, and, and I mean, we know that that there's there's problems with that, but. Um, okay, yeah. I just wanted to make sure because uh, I've got, I mean, I've, I've actually talked to a couple property owners in that area with about two acres, and, and we're talking a cost of under $100,000. So, I mean, it, it's... Yeah, but you look at the, you know, it was $200,000, I mean, $100,000 an acre for Purple Heart Homes property is what I, what I understand it was going to be, like $200,000 for the two and a half acres or whatever it was going to be. And... You know, it was going to be well over a million dollars for site preparation for Amity Hill, where that, that piece of property at Rickert and Monroe Street is virtually flat, and so you're probably looking half, if not close to half, of the the site preparation. So there's your different. I think that's in my mind that's the difference in the money. Well, but you also, and not to get too far off into the weeds, that was the plywood company, and Statesville Screw was right. Mm -hmm. So you may have environmentals that you're dealing with in that area. So. But, 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 okay, just moving forward. I'm sorry. All right. And also, the next slide, what I think is the last one, um, is the Radio Road, uh, Gaither Road area. And I circled that intersection to um, just show the area. The yellow to the left is actually the I-40 ball field. And we have looked at it. We also looked at the piece of property that's owned by the church across across the street from Radio Road from the school. And um, like I say, that area right there, that whole area on Gaither Road, but if we go too far west, we're gonna mess up. We're gonna make the gap to the right a little bit bigger, down to the east a little bit bigger. If we go far, if we start going east towards Sullivan Road area or 21 area, we're gonna make the service gap worse back towards 115. So that area right there I think is we, I'm just like I said before, we rode and rode the areas. We've told people, look at piece of property. And this, this area right here is the best area that I can find or we can find to put the fire station five. And um, Chief Weatherman, say again, you said yellow was what? Yellow is one thing and blue is. Yellow has no structures on it, uh -huh. two and a half acres or more. And the blue has two and a half acres or more with structures on it. Now I'm not counting the bathroom at the at the um, the ball field didn't count as a structure, I guess, because it showed up as yellow. Okay. Well. Okay. 
and we've got the price and, and, of the, and the circles just simply for our understanding for they, they, they just they just represent the perfect place to put it perfect it's area. not saying it's available it's just just saying it's this that's, that's these, the per perfect location for those correct. two these two slides are half mile radius north and south east and west is what those are i just i had gis oh well had them across the street go back and run it and they did a half a mile north and south and east and west just to give us a good area and that's that's putting us right there in the in the vicinity where we need for our response time and our coverage and if we build a station five which that's my my recommendation we need to go ahead and get started on that we would build a three base station instead of a five base station i mean a two base station because I mean, we're building a build, two buildings or one building for the next 50 years. I mean, Station One's a 52-year-old, 50-year-old building, and the rest of them are getting up in age two. So I mean, we're building for the future, so we need to add the extra bay. Good idea. Well, did you take any consideration for having EMS out there as well? It, it, well, EMS is actually looking at that area too, but I think they're wanting to go more further south because of the Trinity area and the risk, you know, they're thinking about putting another ambulance up near the rescue squad area too, you know, up in that way somewhere. But I think, I don't know, they're, they're looking at both of them. They're running, they're running their numbers and their call volume, but the more the call volume for the EMS is south of, of uh, the area instead of north. But they, they're definitely still interested in- They're the, very interested in, 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 yes. in the In the number one, in fire station. In the number one, one, yes. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I'll add, I'll add one cost to to what you're seeing here. The, the dip, you know, one fundamental difference between one, station one to station five is if we were to go with a station five, that there are employees or personnel costs that'll that'll go along with it. Whereas with station one, there are not. So you're you're what we've been thinking that if station five comes online, we're probably adding five five people. So. That, that's the necessary addition that we would need to man that station or run that station. Plus, plus the apparatus. Yeah, plus the plus apparatus. Why is it, why is it just five? Why is it that's going to get our staffing up where we can actually run a minimum of four men on each truck. What's that on the basis? But it's three, three shifts or two. Five shifts. people with benefits and it's going to be about $275,000. That's just personnel. That's personnel and you're looking right at a million for a truck. I need, well, to, I, I need to understand that better because we've, we've been told, I mean, like when we did four, they said it's uh, like it was 15 people at four and it was a million dollars a year for personnel. We already have people on the ladder truck running out of station one. And what we would end up doing is moving those people up to station five and then adding, adding the extra personnel to the, the individual shifts and getting, us, getting our minimum manning up to was it 26, 26, and 27 on the shifts? Or I guess 26 across the board. 26 across the board. That's where your extra person comes from now, Mary. Yeah. We have one shift with two extra people. Oh, yeah. So, but it would bring us up full staff, so we were running five apparatus out of city states instead of four. And the thing is, too, if we, we put a ladder up that area and we have the other ladder in place, we're looking at we could lower our insurance rating from our rating through ISO from a two to a one. That's what I was going to ask you. And that's, gonna, that's really going to that's going to be a big impact on the insurance for commercial businesses. It doesn't do anything for residential, but for commercial right. businesses, that, states what's well, going to be big. And, and one more thing on your question, Mayor, because that, that's a good one. The the five is in addition to us keeping the the fire Six. The, the safer grant positions Correct. that are theoretically going to sunset years or so. so that, that's, another, that's another part of it. We've got a lot of that built in the budget now, but not all of it. How long? Can you run the numbers on, on the operational cost of the fifth fire station? What are they annually? Much. Staff, lights, we'll see. insurance, everything. Well, the staff, the staff is going to be about $275,000. Because we already have the staffing, we're just adding two hundred seventy-five thousand dollars more to that. Now you're going, yeah, like you say, you're going to have the lighting, you're going to have gas, and you're going to have the insurance and all that. But we'll have to run. Yeah, I think I think you're uh, 
underestimating that if you said that if we increased your budget by $275,000 and built a station, that you're going to be able to, able to make ends meet. One of the things I don't, I, I like a station five because it brings coverage to my area <laughs> and also to yours because it's necessary, but we don't have the personnel, we don't have the station, and we don't have the apparatus. We've also made a commitment to do a capital investment of Station 1 in Ward 3 that I think we need to honor that commitment. Um, and there we have the apparatus and we have the personnel. What we're lacking is building the station. As far as a priority, what would happen if we took a baby step towards Station 5, bought an apparatus, one truck, kept it at the Iredell Rescue Center, manned that, we sound like we've got enough men to, uh, enough staff to man one truck, or maybe it might have to add one or two personnel. So then we've got one piece of the apparatus for a fifth station, of which we're eventually gonna need two, and we've got the staffing for that, and we've got the coverage in that area that we need without having to take the full step of a fifth station yet. I don't agree with that. Okay, why not? For one, that's the, that EMS space is not designed for fire service. It's gonna have to have a full kitchen put in. It's gonna have to have a day room put in it. It's gonna have, have to have bedrooms put in it. I don't know if they have the- What happens if you went to a 12 hour shift on that station? You're gonna have to end up adding what, 60 people then? You're gonna, you? you're gonna have to double the amount of people if you go to a 12 hour shift. Or you're going to do 12 at night and 12 during the day. EMS did that, and they ended up having to hire 20, no, 30. You're manning one truck. more people, yes, but you're still going to have to have the people on it. I, I mean, John, you, you probably wouldn't get much bang for your buck on the coverage. Mm -mm. Because if you're, if you're looking at what it covers, you'd be on the extreme western side and getting out to 21 probably. I mean, we've already built one station on the city limits. I don't want to build another one right on the dead city limits. Well, I'm station not saying building a station. I'm saying to, to, to put a Band-Aid on a coverage issue because otherwise you're looking at an investment of $2.5 million in apparatus. No, $8 million. million. Looking at a million dollars, for, roughly a million well, dollars. Well, you said a, another ladder truck. That's well, 1.3. That it's not, no, it's not the big one. It's a quint. Okay, a quint. How much yeah. is a quint? Right at a million dollars. Okay, and how much? 850 to a okay. million dollars, depending on which one you get. Okay, so, well, without all these numbers in front of me, it seems like in a difficult budgetary process that we're in, that this is a, we, we're not limiting our coverage any more than we are right now to, to any extent. So we're, we're not lessening what we've had for the last 10 years than, than by building a new station one. Well, you know, so you made a comment just a minute ago that kind of kind of bothered me a little bit. You made the comment about putting a Band-Aid and doing a Band-Aid fix. I've been employed in the city states for 27 years come this coming December, and that's all I've seen for the past close to 27 years in. And we need to move forward. We need to get, we need to start moving forward in the, in the city for the fire department, for police department and all. We need to start moving forward and making things a lot better for them, better living conditions. We need more coverage. And it's not only for the firefighters, it's for the citizens of states. And, and I agree with that. But, but the Band-Aid's not gonna fix it. That's, that's okay, the problem. So, okay, well, let's forget about it. So if you put all your wound care on station five, you've eliminated the ability to do station one, station three, you've taken those off of the table because the pie is only so big. I, so, I get that, I get so that. If you throw new, new personnel, new apparatus and a new station but, into five, I don't see you having the ability to improve those living conditions at so one and three anymore. Build a station five, get that coverage area fixed. We're getting ready to put $85,000 on the roof of station one 
because it's leaking daily. Every time it rains, it's leaking. That's the roof's already fixed. Spend the extra, I think it's $1.8 million that they want to renovate whole Station 1 and redo Station 1 completely and where it's at. But I stick by the Station 5. We need that Station 5. And Station 1, renovate it. So, I mean, that's just... Well, I mean, so, a, so you're saying... In a big dream, I'd rather have both of them. So you're saying that... Geez, and this is where we get a little in the... Your priority would be to do Station 5 and leave Station 1 where it is permanently? Well, I mean, eventually, no, no. depending on what happens later on, I mean, depending on the development. Well, that let's say for the next working. seven years. Let, let's, let's take a step back. Okay. We have a study that you had asked us to do, okay, to pick out where, where are the best locations. Okay, we have come back with the best locations. We've come back with construction costs on those locations. We don't have operation costs. Operation costs are not going to be our big one. Staffing is going to be our big one. We'd have a one-time cost for the station, one-time cost for the apparatus, carrying costs of the people and the operations. Um, we've established where they need to be, though. But to do a project, to do station one, to do station five, or to do station one and five, uh, uh, let me be clear. We've got to go up on our tax rate to do it. There's no question. We, you, you've seen our fi finances today. And, it, and we had the same discussion with the municipal services bill. You've got to remember, we're in a year where we have, we cut our budgets to zero and we still had looked at, we're, we're still facing taking on debt to fund rolling capital. We may not have to do it because we're, we got good numbers today. <coughs> But you got to understand that we're going to have to pay for it, and it's not going to fit in the puzzle. It's going to be an extra piece to the puzzle. So our thousand-piece puzzle going to thousand and one, because we got this. We have a new station that we've got to find the funding stream for. So I want to be clear that that's how you know it, we're not going to be able to make this fit within our existing parameters. You know, our fifty-four or seven-eight tax rate will have to go up to do either of these projects. Now you can tell us to not do either of them or do both. But, but if we do, it's going to cost, and that's how we would have to pay for it. Let, I, I Fred, yeah, let Fred jump in. Yeah, go ahead. Look, this fire department issue, we've been messing with this for a while. First, we agreed to put it on Amity Hill Road. But after the fire department looked at the survey and said that it would be better coverage on uh, Monroe Street and then putting the one up there, uh, uh, Gaither Radio Road, uh, take care of the gap. We need to go ahead and move forward with this. Go ahead and do both of them. I understand we're looking at costs, but this will help the businesses with the insurance rates and homeowners. We need to go ahead and move forward with this. And I agree. We do. You know, I like to save Station One, but I think we need to go ahead and relocate Station One to Monroe Street, like the fire, like the gentleman said, because look. Growth is coming to the South States, okay? It's in the works. We got things coming. We got a lot of development going there. We need to look at that. If we're going to, so if we're going to have development down there, we need to move the fire department right in that location. We need to go ahead and move forward, bite the bullet, let's go. I mean, the citizens, we got to think about them, you know. I understand we got to watch the budget, how much money we spend, but you cannot put a price on safety in this town. I mean, we get beat up already <laughs> about salaries. And the last thing we need to get up, beat up on now is a, a fire department. So I think we need to go ahead and figure out a way to budget this, pay for it, move forward, get it done. F a 50 year building, hey. What if, we, what if we look at it this way? These numbers, I think, like one of you said, they're kind of preliminary, you right. know. Um, what if you tighten those numbers up both on one and five? Okay, get Marty to come back in, take a look at a redesign, you know, from the municipal services side, and that shouldn't take him too long to do. And then come back to us with a little bit more firm, not committed numbers, but a little bit more accurate numbers, I guess. Um, and then kind of tighten up whether it's going to be Purple Heart, whether it's going to be some other location whether it's going to be 
Statesville Christian, whether it's going to be somewhere else, um, and let us have more of an accurate number before we make a decision, even on whether we want one, five, or both. Yeah, and the operational costs, of course, in, yeah, in and five. Yeah, that would be helpful. Yeah. based on where we're going to work toward my ward, Ward 3, or, ward, or Mr. Foster Ward, um, Ward 5, it seems like it's always a complication. And I think that given the right information, because you, you did that, you, you, you analyzed it, you say this would be the right place for Purple Heart, you uh, fed the community and said, you know, fire station's going there, now you want to renege and say that's not the proper place to put it. We need facts. And, and we need to be fair about what we're doing and how we're doing and, and relating, this, relating the communication to the public. So let's have some thorough communication so that we can be able to address this in a proper manner. If it's going to be Station 1 on Monroe Street, then let it be it. If we're going to have to uh, work toward Station 5, then let it be. But we can't come back here wishy-washy. You say one thing and then you're doing something else. So we, 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 need, we need a solid plan if there's, you know, so we can move forward. Is there, is there, a, is there, a, is there an inclination one way or another on which of the, from the council's perspective, the chief is advocating for station five? Is there, is there a sense on council what you think the, 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 the priority would be? Um, You're saying if it's a one or the other? Yeah, to one or the other. Because to William's point, it's going to, to get good numbers. I, I mean, I think we got pretty good numbers on um, on five. On, on five, five, I agree. Um, one's going to it's going to cost us some money. I mean, I won't say. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know that we'd have to we'd have to pay Marty some money to really dig in and get get that. I'm not sure what that would be. I don't think it'd have to be a total redesign, but it's going to cost. But if that's not even Priority one for the board, I'd say well, I'm going to do that. Let's just look at five. But if not, then then we'll get with him to do that. Well, you know, for me, the, the decision is, is tough to answer that question simply because we've got a an ailing fire station down here in one that you are getting ready to put a roof on, and you've you know it's it's I won't say it's falling apart, but it's got issues. Okay? It needs more work. It, it needs more work. And at the same time, we've got a coverage gap mm -hmm. that needs to be addressed. Um, so, you know, how, how do you prioritize that? They both need to, to Frederick's point, they both need to be done. How right. many years, it, Andy, I think I heard you say 1.8 million total renovation on station. Well, that's what Marty estimated, is that correct? 1.8 million dollars? How many years is that like? I, I'm I not sure. I would say that, I mean, that's a total re reno. I mean, that, that's a total renovation. And you know, one thing that hasn't been talked about a lot is that maybe you maybe you renovate Station One, and then at some point when growth really goes nuts in the South End, you move somewhere further south and and, and split one up then. But his numbers are accurate on it. His numbers are accurate. If you buy if it buys you ten years, it's a wash. If it doesn't get you 10 years, you, you better off not spending it. I, I would assume it would give us 10 years. What, does uh, do, do any of you all know our history of uh, death or serious personal injury from fire over the last period of time? Have, when, when was the last death in a fire in the city of Statesville? Was that a little boy? Yeah. The little boy that couldn't get out of the house over there by Garfield Street? On Bovard Street. Street? The thing is, it happened right this second, too. So. The, um, well, and again, it, okay, we, we're, I think we're getting closer, but it, it appears, is, is, is everybody feeling the same that we need to kind of uh, refine the figures a little bit more? I mean, I, I really, I really was not aware that 
the renovation of the existing station one was even on that, the table. That, that's a new a new parameter yeah. introduced today. So yeah, that, I mean, way, that's, Marty had actually. Well, I don't care what Marty did. I mean, what, I, we, we care what we need to know. We're the ones that are gonna spend the money. So if Marty tells you something, you need to tell him so he can tell us. But I'm, I'm just saying that we need, we need to get on with the program. And the, the third thing, I mean, the, the other thing is, as you look at a relocated fire station one, let's compare apples with apples. If, if I mean, if administrative offices is another million bucks, then put that in a side column because this number looks extremely high but maybe it's not high when you've added a variety of bells and whistles that aren't available at the other like at station four this this is not anywhere close to i mean the the, the moved station one is a lot more than what we've got at station four right because you're talking about all these you were talking about didn't you talk about other things other than administrative that added yeah, to this yeah, cost. That, that, the, the hub is what he calls it. Well, yeah. the, the thing that I, I think is a gap in the presentation is the square footage for station one. I mean, I, I clearly understand the cost per square foot for station five, but I do not understand for station one. So we, we don't know that yet. Yeah, that, that's the one we just could not get the best numbers on. So that's, right, so that's one he's really got. All right, so let's go back to Ron's question, which is, and maybe, maybe, maybe the answer, well, well, let's see. If, if the choice were, because you're saying we're getting ready to spend some money if we're going to hone in, does the council have a preference if, if, if we were restricted to doing one? If we said right now we can just do one or the other, is there a preference of a relocated station one or a, a new station five? If it was down to one, I'll throw a vote in there. I would say redo station one. N not adding to this the new uh, caveat of renovation of the existing station one, but okay. if it's no. a relocation. Yeah, I'm not, I'm, not, one, I'm not talking about that. They can bring us yeah. information about if, that, if but right only, now, if what I'm If it's a relocation and only one, I'm going to say that it'd be station one. In my All right, well, we'll just kind of get a, sh a show of uh, it. I mean, and again, I'm not saying that's the final answer, but I think that's what Ron is asking us. Yeah. Um, is, is there a preference among the members of council as to which way we would go? I like to say that I want the information total as, as we all have said, what the total cost, because I feel like you've given us bits and pieces on station one, but you've given us more uh, about station five than you have about the informational cost on station one. And I, I don't think that's fair because we're coming up with new issues and new concerns that, you know, you, you saying what this gentleman is telling you, and but we're not getting that because if, when we first started this, it was about station one and it was a need and station one was, was a disaster. You know, it need to be replaced. Now you said it need to be fixed. So well, the mix. And that, yeah, that, that's not, we, we probably shouldn't even be talking about the renovation yeah. because yeah. He, he just kind of threw that out. Uh, he should have thrown it out. But, but Marty has, has He should have kept his mouth shut. Yeah. So <laughs> it, if we can if we can examine I that as a possibility, we will. I agree. But I would say that look at it this way. Station one is going to be if we add admin into it, and it being the station that the, the main station of the city is going to be more expensive. How much? We'll figure that out. It's not going to be twice as much. I, I actually wonder if, if these numbers might be reasonable. But the reason I said segregated is so that we can compare apples with apples and say, you know, your base station is X, but because it needs to be the place where you have administration and you've got other services, it's a central location that adds this much more money to it. And, and you're, you're right. I, I would say when you're prioritizing it, I guess the thing I would say is, are you going to be willing to fund Five plus people in a new quint or a new or a new apparatus. What's department. the cost? That that because that's an add-in cost to station five. And what it might do is it might level it off. I, I think well, I think the problem's got to be defined. Yeah. The problem's got to be defined. Public safety. If we have a gap in coverage in public safety, and if that's the number one issue, then that's the issue that we got to address. <clears throat> and to address that issue, it's going to 
caused an increase in equipment, personnel, and facilities because it's got to be located here. And then, and then, and then we go from there. And what, what is that? What is that impact to our tax rate? The, the, the a problem. I mean, I, I agree, David, one hundred percent. A problem in defining public safety needs is, and I think John kind of hit on this, or somebody. It's, it's been ten. Somebody said it's been ten years, and we've had that gap right. there. Well, what has been the consequence of that gap? You know, of course, if somebody dies today, we're all heartbroken. But I don't think anybody has died from a fire. I'm not sure there's been a significant fire in that gap in that decade. So how, I mean, you know, you want to provide public safety, but at what cost? And so that's what you can never quantify. Because all you can say right now is there's a gap. But that may be because of the way the people behave and all that. It may be the safest area in the, it may be in the community. <coughs> I mean, I, I think, I think that's, that's what they've defined is that if we're going to cover an area and and in five be able minutes. to get in that area within five minutes, okay. well then that's the definition of public safety of meeting public safety. But see that yeah, but that's that's not our definition. I mean, you know, that's I mean, I'm I'm I'm, I'm never I'm just not sure. I'm not saying it's a bad definition, but I'm not sure it's a valid definition in 2020. It may have been a valid definition in. 1960 but construction standards and safety standards in construction and all that have oh and the main thing is education and inspection by these guys every day has just gone through the roof i mean everybody gets an inspection annually everybody you know all the opportunities to to start education even with the quiz bowl for little kids so you know the it, it may be that the people that create, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, it may be the people that created the standard for the highest level of public safety, that that, that, that standard has changed. But, but I'm, anyway, so it sounds as if there's enough need to know more information that maybe nobody wants to say one or five uh, any more than what they've said so far. Right now, tell us, Ron. Hello. It, well, I doubt it. Is, what we're doing is the leak, the station one roof is leaking like you just said. We're not going to tear the building down if we move out of it. It needs to go ahead and be put we, that in, getting oh, someone to fix it. We are. We are. Now, it's underway now. Okay, so, so we're not, we're not that necessarily. That shouldn't even have a play into the book. Yeah, we're just, we're just maintaining city-owned property. We're not saying that it's a fire, I mean, you know, it, it's a fire station for now, but if Jap says it'll be something for the city. Ron, on that future. point, though, are we requiring that that roof be put out to bid, or are we using it under an emergency repair and just going ahead and funding it? Why? We had a leak on the Civic Center, and it was repaired. This bid does not have, it's been bid, it doesn't have to. It's been leaking for a while. I mean, we're, we're just trying to get the best price on it. Well, how many bids have you got? I mean, we're, on, we're, we're, we've got the. We got the bid. We've we, got the contractor on it. We got the bids in, then we were told we had to do it through HUD. Through? So then it had to be rebid again. And Dino's handling that right now. But now if we, Consider it an emergency repair, and I would think that if water is coming in to your building, that's an emergency repair. Do we have to go through that process? Um, I think it's best practice to. You could expedite it. Um, I mean, I would say yes. I can always say no, you don't have to. But, um, I mean, under the circumstances here, I thought it was enough money that we, should, we needed to do it. If we didn't do it, then we'd get, we'd get hit from the other side as well. So it's best to do it if you can. To have it go through the 30-day process? It, it's, not, it's not a 30-day process. I mean, it was, we, we went out and got three bids. Um, had to redo it because we do have a requirement to uh, use, uh, at least advertise with historically underutilized businesses, which that's the best practice. So we did it that way as well. But that's, that's done now. So we're, I mean, it's, it's okay, it's in process. So now, um, since we're saying get us more precise information, um, 
what what kind of I mean do we need to authorize some expense to get us to that point it's probably within your authority to spend it but you probably want our approval on this particular thing I would guess. well I, I don't even know what that number would be but I, let me let me kind of dig dig into this figure out what it would be to refine station uh, station one's costs we'll probably want to do it with and without admin with you know because I could I could see coming back and this being a discussion, you know, why why we, we already have admin somewhere, why put them in a new building? So I'm gonna run it, but we'll run it both ways just to be sure. So um, we'll get all in costs for both stations, and what the impact on the tax rate would be uh, to fund either or both. We'll ask. We'll ask Marty to flesh out a renovation. I don't know that that's worth doing, but we'll have him flesh that out uh, and see what that looks like for station, the existing station. Do, do um, we want to convolute that? Do we want to add that to the equation? The, the renovation? I, I don't, but that's, that's a good question. The question John's asking is, do we want to even add the renovation of the building that houses station one uh, in to, 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 I mean, do we want do we want a renovation of it as a fire station? To if even you put the proper of amount of air in that ladder truck's tires, it won't fit in that bay. That's true. We've had <laughs> issues. we've already had issues, but yeah. um, I mean, if you don't want us to include it, that's fine with me. You know, we we, we don't we hadn't intended on it, and and if our station location analysis says, um, you know, Purple Heart Homes are real close to that as the right spot then that's going to be the right spot. So I think we're convoluting it by adding a third element. Right. right. Well, let's, let's just see how people feel. Are you, are you, are you? Yeah, we have no parking. Are you, are you okay with not, not including the renovation of st the current station one as part of this analysis? I am okay. I'm okay not, not, uh, adding the roof into it because the roof oh, no, is no, the main we're gonna, thing. We're going to add a roof. We're, I mean, what I'm saying is we've probably got some use for that building someday, but we're just saying we, we don't want, we, we're not, we don't want to add the renovation of it as a fire station into this process. Right. You agree yeah. with that? Yeah. Doris? I agree. Yes. Okay. All right. David? Okay. All right. So is that, is that, what, what should we expect the timeline on, on this to be? The next meeting, is that too soon? Um, yeah, well, that's almost a month away. We might be able to meet that. If we can't do that, let's make our goal uh, the first meeting in October. But okay. yeah, September I, I, I think. Next meeting, so that might be Can I ask one more question on Station 1? With, I'm going to assume that given the land restrictions you have, there's no way to renovate that where you have drive three bays. Which one? Station 1. No way. No way. And, we don't have enough parking for our firefighters. I mean, they are parking everywhere now as it is. I just, well, as Dora said, you're the one that brought it up, so let's just, yeah. <laughs> let's just forget about it. That's right. Okay. All right. Now, uh, it may be, I, I'm going to suggest, if w whenever we do this, I hope the council will be prepared to come an hour or so early that day or two hours, or, you know, so that we can take this as an independent, freestanding item and move forward. So. Hopefully it's the 21st. We'll, we'll try. Yeah, but I'm, 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 not, I'm not putting pressure on you to do that, but if we can do it the 21st, that would be wonderful. If we can't do it the 21st and it's sometime between the 21st and the October meeting, I would almost suggest that we, you know, come in at three or four in the afternoon and just talk about it for a couple hours and get, get moving. I don't believe. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Good right, presentation. Thank you. And um, we... Is, now? <laughs> you can. Is there anything further that we need? Ron, have you got anything further? Can I just say one thing? I know you all did not want to spend six hours on Saturday or Friday. Saturday would be worse. Um, Friday, but you know these were meaningful discussions that we really needed your guidance on. And I appreciate it. Um, you know, no, wasn't all good news, obviously, but it gives us some some uh, direction moving. Oh, I think it was very important. Uh, I think it's critical important. that we right. do this. Yeah. Thank you. No, I think I think people are saying more that we'd rather do it more often. Okay, all in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 Okay. Have a good weekend. Holy moly! All right, I'm gonna, I got more money. Here, here, here.